issues. This short video demonstrates the protocol we're using in our lung research project, which is designed to differentiate between heart failure and COPD. However, the techniques demonstrated here can be extrapolated to find local pathologies such as pneumothorax or pneumonia. Lung ultrasound is predominantly the study of artifact, so you must lower the depth and raise the focus contrary to usual practice. You're aiming for a picture like this with at least one rib shadow and a white line sliding just beneath. Get into the habit now of labelling, saving and then critiquing your pictures as this is the best way to improve. We are fairly minimalistic when it comes to labelling. R1, R2, R3 and R4 accumulate across the top of the screen. Then we scan the left lung. This is purely our convention. We find that it exposes less of the patient at any one time and also makes it easier for a subsequent auditor to figure out which picture he's looking at. Lung scanning is technically very easy. It's hard to miss the lung. You either rock the probe side to side to get the pleura in focus or where the cupola of the lung dives deep over the shoulder you may need to heel toe the probe such that the pleural surface is more horizontal. So remember heel toe or side to side movements to sharpen the picture. We scan two anterior and two lateral regions on the chest in the mid clavicular line high on the clavicle such that the clavicles in the far left of the picture and the second or third rib on the right. Region 2 continues in the mid clavicular line low on the chest just above the diaphragm aiming for the middle lobe. In older patients this may be at the level of the nipple or above. Try to get more lung than liver. Note how the cartilaginous rib allows visualization of the pleural line beneath the ribs. Regions 3 and 4 are between the anterior and posterior axillary lines. Keep the arm at 45 degrees because the anterior axillary fold acts as a landmark. Often you're scanning tangential to the ribs so you may not get a rib shadow in view. The most posterior of the views requires your hand to be under the probe virtually flat on the bed because you want to demonstrate the costophrenic angle and thus show the smallest of pleural effusions. It's good to have a bit of liver in the picture, I think. Next, we scan the left lung. The positions are all the same. Uh, regions 1 and 2 in the mid-clavicular line, regions 3 and 4 between the anterior and posterior axillary lines. Because you're leaning across the patient, you may have to rock the probe a little bit towards the mediastinum. Again, you've got clavicle on the left of your picture, uh, region 2 can be made a little difficult in patients with cardiomegaly. You may have to cheat a bit by moving more rostrally to get a picture of lung. And often you'll see a little bit of heart beating in the far right of your screen. Uh, the anterior or behind the anterior axillary fold. And the last picture, of course, has again your hand flat on the bed. Uh, to get that costophrenic recess. Note in the picture how we have the lovely curtain sign of the lung uh, obscuring the spleen. So remember you want depth at least 10 to 12 centimeters and your focus as high as it will let you go. We are encouraging our registrars to collect a subcostal cardiac clip. It's good practice. Using a curved abdominal probe with the marker towards the patient's right placed high in the epigastrium just below the xiphoid with your hand on top of the probe such that when you flatten the probe to look under that costal margin there's no fingers caught underneath. You may need to point the probe towards the left shoulder or back towards the midline depending on patient habitus. It's an easy view but may often be obscured by gas in the stomach. If you can do it, a parasternal long axis is more reliable. Remember to end and store your pictures because continuous self-critique is the way to learn. Remember this is a screening protocol. If you're looking for local pathology, you must sit the patient forward and interrogate regions 5 and 6 on the back of the lungs. There are some very interesting local pathologies that can be hidden here.